scaring away groupies, battling punks in England, and a life-changing look in the mirror. From the Go-Go's to her solo career, Belinda Carlisle's life might seem perfect, but she's dealt with her share of tragedy. When Belinda Carlisle released her memoir, Lips Unsealed, she included a lot of tough conversations about numerous difficult topics, starting with her childhood. Carlisle recalled that she had grown up knowing that her mother and grandmother had big dreams that tragically fell short. Her mother was still in high school when she met Harold Carlisle, a gas station employee two decades her senior. They married when she graduated, and Belinda was born less than nine months later. Her mother would later admit in the memoir, I was so stupid, he was a bum. A brother and sister followed in the next four years, and Carlisle wrote that she had no idea why her mother had two more children, which she had been so heartbreakingly miserable. Inside the house, she recalled that tensions were always high. Her father had a temper, she wrote, and her mother didn't trust him. Sometimes, the distrust and anger boiled over to the children, as Carlisle wrote about one terrifying incident that stuck with her for her entire life, writing, I was literally caught in the middle of one of their more physical arguments, with one of them pulling my legs and the other my arms, until it seemed I might split into two pieces. In her memoir, Belinda Carlisle wrote that after her father lost his job and started his own carpet cleaning business, he was rarely home. While he was gone, her mother turned to a carpenter across the street, who would ultimately become her stepfather. The rumor mill had been churning in the meantime, and Carlisle found herself ostracized from friends, who had been told they could no longer play with her because of her mother's reputation. According to The Guardian, Carlisle would eventually end up being the eldest child in a home of seven, and it was run by her stepfather, who not only struggled with alcohol addiction, but believed in physical punishments. Fortunately, Carlisle said that he did get sober, and that eventually many amends were made. When she was younger, though, she wanted nothing more than to rebel, to escape the home that never felt safe, and prove that he was wrong about her, and that she would make something of herself. The Guardian reports that Belinda Carlisle moved to Los Angeles when she was 18. She immediately fell into the city's thriving punk scene, and for several years, lived in a punk commune that had been set up in an abandoned building, with Carlisle recalling, it was all bands and music, and drugs of course. When Carlisle spoke with Hope to Cope, she was candid about the perfect storm of factors that had led to three decades of hardcore drug use, explaining, I found drugs numbed a lot of the pain I had been feeling since childhood. She added that the longer it went on, the more aware of her own destructive behavior she was. She knew she had to stop, but when she continued to use, she became trapped in a pattern of addiction. She has been incredibly candid about her experiences, recounting how she relied on drugs to get her through the day, hated herself for continuing to use, and used the drugs to dull the pain of her depression. As she recalled to The Guardian, I can't believe I'm not dead. I should actually look like the Phantom of the Opera with just two holes in the front of my face. When the Go-Go's first started, they started with zero experience. And that's not an exaggeration. Belinda Carlisle told the Sydney Morning Herald, Our only ambition was to learn how to plug our guitars into our amplifiers. We really started from absolute zero, and even by punk standards, we were incredibly bad. People used to come just to laugh at us. It was DIY, and if you were terrible, you were cooler. And um, anybody could do whatever they wanted. It was total freedom. While they started in Hollywood, they eventually made the inevitable trip to England, the heart of punk. Carlisle and the Go-Go's toured England with a ska band called Madness, and Carlisle recounted just how bad it was in her memoir, recalling heckling, catcalling, and requests for a show of a different kind, with Carlisle writing, It was horrible. I remember coming off crying and covered in snot. It was lonely, and it was dangerous. Five little white girls from Southern California being thrown in with all these hardcore skinheads. When Belinda Carlisle sat down to talk to the Sydney Morning Herald in 2007, she was not only clean, but she had just released her first solo album in a decade. She spoke about how the years of addiction had changed her voice, and spoke honestly about her and the Go-Go's past behavior, telling the Sydney Morning Herald, Basically, our behavior was designed to horrify. You have to remember that girls behaving that badly were a real rarity at the time. We always wanted to have male groupies, but we scared them off. Carlisle said that while they initially thought they had a handle on things, things quickly spiraled for the Go-Go's. When they started going on tour, she said, parcels of drugs would be delivered to their dressing rooms via FedEx. Carlisle says that she started to see something was wrong when she missed her flight to London five times in a row. It wasn't just the drugs that were dangerous, it's the lengths she went to in order to procure them. She told Salon that she was in Brazil looking for cocaine when she was directed to an apartment near Ipanema Beach. Somewhat unsurprisingly, it put her in a bad situation, with Carlisle recalling, 
It was so hardcore. There were guns everywhere. It's amazing that I'm not dead, honestly. Belinda Carlisle's drug use lasted for three decades, and as she told Salon, she only became clean and sober in 2005. Not everyone around her knew that, though, and she shared that for a long time. She simply sort of just lied through omission. She never outright said that she had stopped drinking and using drugs, and instead just let everyone think that she had, explaining, I just didn't tell the whole truth. The sheer length of time it took her to seek help and get clean ended up being the basis for her memoir, explaining, I wanted to write more of an inspirational book about how one can make changes late in life and about how it's possible to overcome abuse, addiction, and self-sabotage. It took a long time and a powerful vision for her to commit to change. She wrote in her memoir that it was a vision of her death that finally pushed her to get treatment. It was 2005, and she locked herself in her hotel room for a three-day cocaine binge. She wrote, when I looked at my eyes in the mirror, I didn't see anyone looking back at me. The lights were out. I was gone. It scared me. Yet, I didn't stop until I had an extraordinarily frightening out-of-body experience, where I saw myself overdosing and being found dead in the hotel room. You know, being in your mid-40s as a drug addict, it's not, you know, it's, it's not and good. To describe the rise of the Go-Go's as meteoric isn't an exaggeration, and according to what Belinda Carlisle told The Guardian, they went from not knowing how to set up their instruments to the top of the charts in just three years. That left her with a deep-seated fear, as she explained. I was scared that I wasn't any good, and the audience would see me as the fake I feared I might be. Carlisle described her teen years as a time when she was never really comfortable with who she was, and when she was asked about imposter syndrome, she agreed that it sounded very much like what she went through for a long time. When Carlisle talked to Hope Deco, she said that those feelings weren't helped by childhood memories, saying, I was always being told I wasn't good enough. She grew up believing it, and when Beauty and the Bee charted at number one, she said she was unable to enjoy it. Instead, she was terrified she would be unmasked as a fraud. If Belinda Carlisle has been honest about her drug addiction, she's also been straightforward about the stresses and challenges that led her down that path. It's still, it all comes yeah. from the same place, you know, yeah. the eating, the, the, the addiction, that. it's that hole in the soul. In 2018, she spoke with Deseret News about how the media's obsession with her weight pushed her to use cocaine as a way of staying thin, saying about how she was portrayed. I was cute and chubby, pretty and plump. It was always about my weight. I never had a problem with it until the media put such a focus on it. It really, really messed my head up. The spotlight only got more judgmental after the Go-Go's broke up the band, and Carlisle embarked on her solo career. In her memoir, she recalled facing a rebranding as a pop star and comparing herself to Madonna. That, she said, only escalated the addiction and eating disorders that were already there, writing. I never had a problem with the way I looked or with my weight, but the media had a problem with it because I was voluptuous. I was normal. I wasn't jealous of Madonna. I was envious of her and how she looked. Menopause isn't typically something that's discussed much, even though symptoms and physical challenges can be life-changing for some women. Belinda Carlisle has tried to break some of that stigma and sat down on Hallmark Channel's Home and Family for a conversation not only about her own challenges, but those of her mother. My mom had really bad menopause, so I just assumed that I would follow in the footsteps of my mother. She went on to say that her mother had such bad depression that there had been talk of committing her to a psychiatric ward. They didn't, but she recalled that the time of not knowing what was going to happen to her mother was terrifying. She explained more to the Daily Mail, saying, She suddenly became really agitated and very, very down, and she spent a lot of time sitting in her room crying. When it came time for her to go through it, she said that she had the irritability and mood swings, but worse than that were the hot flashes that got so bad and so frequent that she resorted to carrying around a change of clothes, sharing, I tried not to let it get in the way of my life and tried to carry on as normal. You do the best you can. Belinda Carlisle has one son, James Duke Mason, and when she described their relationship in Advocate, she summed up her feelings like this, I couldn't be more proud of him. As a mother, I can't imagine it being any better because I really dodged a bullet. I could have had a teenage girl just like I was, and I was a nightmare, but I had a nice, beautiful gay son. It wasn't always easy, though, and Carlisle has said to The Guardian that her biggest regret in life is that she hadn't been around enough for her son when he was growing up. She recalled the moment that it hit home just how little she had been there for him, saying that after she got sober, he had confessed that when he was young, he had simply believed that she lived at the airport, and that, she said, broke her heart. Mason, however, has addressed her feelings around being an absentee mother, saying that they were completely unfounded. In a heartfelt Mother's Day letter to her, published by HuffPost, he assured her, writing, 
She has always been an amazing mother, and I had no idea she had an issue with substance abuse until long after she'd gotten sober and decided to open up to me about it. If you or anyone you know needs help with addiction issues, help is available. Visit the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration website or contact SAMHSA's National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP-4357. 